Good afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be taking this presentation in. Welcome to the Lipman Partners 2023 Spring Conference. In this panel, we will be discussing the direction of the animal health industry, primarily on the companion animal side. Uh, independent industry analysts have estimated that the size of the U.S. companion animal health market was valued at approximately $5.2 billion last year in 2022, and is expected to grow at a compound annual rate in excess of 10% from 2023 to 2030. Clearly, this is a large and growing market. Uh, to discuss this opportunity with us today, we have Lisa Conti, CEO of Jaguar Health, listed on NASDAQ under the symbol JAGX, Larry Heaton, CEO of Zometica, NYSE American Listed, the ticker is ZOM, and Tom Butera, CEO of Volition Vet, a division of Volition RX, ticker symbol of VNRX, also listed on the NYSE America. I'd like to begin this conversation by having each one of our guests here provide a brief overview of their companies, what they do, and what makes them distinctive. Uh, let's begin with Lisa Conte of uh, Jaguar Health, then we'll hear from Larry Heaton at uh, Zometica and Tom Butera introducing Volition. Lisa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here, and I am so appreciative of all the life and conferences. Um, you really have great reach and a great opportunity to introduce our companies. So what we do at Jaguar Health is all plant-based drug discovery from plants that have been used traditionally in tropical areas. And in particular, we focused on gastrointestinal diseases. And we have a division that is focused all on animal health called Jaguar Animal Health. So we do business at Jaguar Animal Health. We do have our first prescription product that has been approved in that area. It's an active ingredient known as crofelomer. The brand name is Canalevia. And what's really, and it's for chemotherapy-induced diarrhea. And what's really fascinating is it has a first-in-class mechanism of action that targets a site, a biological site, a physiological site that is highly conserved across all mammals. So the same product that is approved and utilized in humans is approved and utilized in dogs. We have a non-prescription version that works by the same mechanism of action for calves and for horses and eventually intend to expand to all other animals. And the same features, plant-based, organic, sustainably harvested, fair trade, and an FDA approved product and really focusing on comfort, and supportive care of the animals and to the entire extended animal family, the animal parents and brothers and sisters that have two legs as well. Thank you, Lisa. Larry, what can you tell us about Zomatic? Well, thanks, Joe, and thanks for the opportunity to, um, to join this panel and to present at your conference uh, later on. Uh, Zomatica is a public company. As you mentioned, we're traded on the NYSE American under ZOM. And at Zomatica, we're really focused on the customer, the veterinarian, and in turn, their clients. We focus on bringing diagnostic and, techno and therapeutic technology to veterinarians to help them do the things that they really love to do, and that is improve the quality of care for the pets they treat and the satisfaction of their pet parents. But importantly, we also focus on helping them do the things they really need to do, which is improve the workflow, cash flow, and profitability of their practice. Rather than focusing on one particular segment of technology or products, our technology ranges from diagnostic laboratory testing equipment, our true form of platform, to diagnostic imaging, our true view digital microscope, and diagnostic monitoring, our VetGuardian wireless uh, pet vital sign monitoring system. We also provide therapeutic products. Our pulse vet shockwave system is, is uh, used in clinics. Uh, to treat a variety of conditions in both small animals and also in the equine market. And we also enable veterinarians to send the healing home with our CC loop products that are used by pet parents at home and includes them in sort of the clinical pathway. Throughout, we focus on meeting those five pillars. Each product that we bring to market must improve the quality of care for the pet, 
and the satisfaction of the pet parent, but also have a positive impact on the workflow, cash flow, and profitability of the practice. Thank you for that, Larry. Tom, volition. Thank you, Joe, and thank you to uh, Lytham Partners for inviting Volition Veterinary to the uh, uh, for a little conference and panel presentation today. And thanks again for joining Lisa and Larry with their great companies as well. Uh, Volition Veterinary, is a, as Joe mentioned, is a subsidiary of Volition, and Volition is an epigenetics company. Well, epigenetics company is really a, a company that studies the chromatin-based DNA chromatin matrix. And what happens is there are nucleosomes which comprise that DNA matrix. And consequently, when there is an illness of some sort, be it cancer or other inflammatory condition, those nucleosomes are released into the bloodstream. And consequently, our company, over the course of uh, the last 10 years on the human side in particular, has developed a test where we can identify those nucleosomes and identify uh, where they are potentially coming from uh, when there is some form of illness, and in particular, study of cancer. I've joined Volition Veterinary. Uh, I am a veterinarian. I joined them about two years ago, and we are in the process of commercializing our first product, which is called the New Q Vet Cancer Test. Now, the New Q Vet Cancer Test is a screening test, which is utilized, is meant to be utilized for well animals over the age of seven years of age, and also for animals that are predisposed breeds, such as golden retrievers and Labradors, probably starting around at the age of four. Interestingly enough, one out of every four companion animal dogs die of cancer on an annual basis. Close to 50% of dogs over the age of nine, 10 years of age die of cancer. In the United States alone, there are 6 million dogs a year that are diagnosed with cancer. The interesting part about this is it's a disease, cancer being as uh, invasive as it is in veterinary medicine is something that unfortunately veterinarians have not had the opportunity to screen early. We predominantly have been presented with cases that are ill animals that are symptomatic, that come in and see us with uh, being ill, swollen lymph nodes, and we are starting from there. We are the first affordable and accessible cancer screening test, which is just a simple liquid biopsy test. It only takes a couple of milliliters of blood, which is generally done at your general, at your illness, at your annual wellness care with your dog when you present it to the veterinarian. And it takes about a half a milliliter of plasma. It can be sent off to the reference lab. And in the future, in the very near future, probably the next couple of months, We'll also have a point of care test, which will be available in the veterinary hospitals where it can be run within about 10 minutes. The idea behind this and the whole purpose of me being here and the whole purpose of Volition Veterinary being here is really to save lives. There are many too many pets that we've unfortunately been put to sleep because we didn't know that they had cancer and they were just presented to us when they were symptomatic. If in fact, we can diagnose early, we can detect cancer early, and then engage in additional diagnostic work to identify where the cancer is coming from or what it is, then treating these non-compromised animals, in other words, these animals that are not sick, versus what we are currently doing and have been historically doing for many, many years is treating animals that are sick. And unfortunately, the pathway, in particular with lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma, which are very common in dogs, the pathway on average with treatment and expensive therapeutics is maybe around 10 months. You know, hopefully, maybe you can get to 18 months, but on average, it's about 10 months. Let's just think about the possibilities of treating these same animals when they are well, when their organs are in, in good shape when their organs are not compromised. Think about the possibilities of treating those animals and the possibilities of having much more extended life and much more successful outcomes. Mm -hmm. What's also going to potentially happen is we are hopefully creating a revolutionary change in how we address cancer because it's going to bring in other, other therapeutics like CAR-T and many of the things that are on the human side, PD-1s, where we potentially develop additional drugs and additional medications that can be used on healthy animals. 
because our initial test is meant to be used on healthy animals, not on sick animals. We are trying to identify it as part of the annual wellness exam. Just to give you an idea, there's 84 million dogs in the United States alone. 51% of them are brought in every year for an annual wellness exam at their veterinarians. So you can see that the opportunity to identify a lot of dogs when they're healthy with a liquid biopsy test is just a small amount of blood and being able to detect whether they have an elevation in these nucleosomes that I mentioned earlier to you is indicative that if something is going on with that pet, in particular cancer, especially if they are in a healthy state, is an opportunity that veterinarians have not had before. So to have an affordable and accessible test like this that can be used on a number of different platforms and can be, we're looking for potentially worldwide distribution of our tests and we're making headways in that. We'll go into that a little bit later. It's something that we all feel very passionate about. And at the end of the day, we really think it's going to do a tremendous amount for our veterinary colleagues. And of course, most importantly for the pet owners and their four-legged friends. Thank you for that, Tom. Very detailed. And since we're talking about cancer, uh, Lisa, I know that you've got a product that's uh, very much focused on that. Tell us a little bit about it. I will. And uh, Tom, I very much appreciated all the statistics you just rattled off because we had the exact same one. Cancer is, you know, we're looking at these dogs not only for what they are going through, what it's putting the entire family through, but they're also sort of sentinels of what's going on on the human side as well. And so our product, as I mentioned, is Canalevia. It's for chemotherapy-induced diarrhea in dogs. It is a conditional approval, so we were able to get it out very quickly while we are going forward with, um, with the clinical studies to get the full approval for the product. And as I said, it targets a, a site that is highly conserved in humans and animals, and while supportive care, quality of life, dignity is very important in two-legged and four-legged legged beings, almost more important on the animal side because you can't talk to them and say, you know, you're you're going to go through chemo, it's going to be terrible, you're going to feel sick, but it'll be okay at the end of it. So that comfort is almost even more important so that they don't lose control. And for the quality of life of the whole family, dogs that are in urban areas that are living in apartments, you don't want them to lose control. But Tom, you know, one of the things that I'd like to mention to you, and maybe we would talk about this offline, we also started something called the Take Charge uh, Canine Cancer Registry. And I think it's TakeChargeRegistry.com. There's no registry in the United States for canine cancer, whereas they do exist in many places around the world. And so documenting and collecting information on cancer by dog age, by geography, by size, by, by breed, um, information that, is, and it's chaired by two wonderful um, oncologists that I'm sure you know, Dr. Craig Clifford and Terry Fossum. We have an advisory board of several other leading veterinary oncologists and information that is helpful not only to the treating veterinarian, and it would be so helpful, right, if you can get these animals in even earlier, but for the pet parent, you know, typically they're going through it in a very siloed way as the first time. So it creates information and community for the for the pet parent as well. And more information is, is always important. And as I said, the links between what's going on in the animal world and the human world is, is very important as well. These numbers are staggering what's happening with canine cancer and, you know, no reason to suspect that they're going to turn around and go in the right direction. I think one of the great hopes is being able to identify, uh, you know, illnesses, potential illnesses earlier and have a better outcome. Um, we find that the some of the rationale for treating with supportive care is remarkably similar between animals and humans. About 50, 40 to 50% of humans go off their cancer care, their life-saving therapy, or go to a subtherapeutic dose because of the side effect of diarrhea, you find almost the same thing that's happening in animals as well. Then you get into the additional cost if you have to bring an animal in or a human in for rehydration. So it's a, it's a really important area, as we know, to tackle from multiple different sides right now. So I'll stop there. Thanks, Lisa. Um, 
Uh, let's let's segue back to more of a macro look uh, at the top here. Uh, I had mentioned that you all operate in, in large and growing markets. Uh, obviously, it's pet owners that are driving this. Uh, they increasingly consider their pets as family members and they treat them as such. Uh, what are they looking for nowadays to better treat their animals? Larry, what are you and you, your team seeing out there, Larry? So we are seeing uh, that there is, a, as you mentioned, a very big move, and I think it's been gradual, but it's been going on for a long time, of, of humanization of pets, that uh, people are treating the pet not as, uh, not as an animal, but as a member of their family. And of course, they're both. But when you have a member of your family that gets sick or get injured, you don't hesitate to take them to the doctor. And in this case, uh, that member of the family is taking you to the veterinarian. You know, during the pandemic, there were over 23 million dogs uh, adopted by pet parents in the United States. And that's a huge increase, of course. And these are not generally dogs that are at advanced age, but generally are puppies or, and then of course there's cats and kittens as well. And so what we're seeing in the, in the veterinarian community is they really are being hard pressed to be able to meet the demand of all the pet parents that are bringing uh, pets to them. IDEX recently released some data that said that, that pet parent visits were down about 3% in the, in the previous quarter, uh, not because the pet parents weren't going, but because the supply uh, wasn't there. Uh, veterinarians face significant challenges today. Uh, there's a shortage of them. Uh, the, the market has increased. Uh, and the biggest challenge they face is staffing. A lot of times they're having to reduce hours uh, or reduce days of, of practice because they just don't have they just don't have the staff. And this is a problem or a situation that's only going to increase in complexity and, and in challenge because as these uh, small pets or young pets, kittens and puppies, as they grow to dogs and get to a more advanced ages, then they're they're going to be bringing additional ailments to that veterinarian. And so the number of practices are going to increase as we move forward. We see the number one issue uh, for vets today is being staffing. And that's one of the reasons why all of our products are really geared around uh, trying to reduce, to in, improve the workflow in the practice, uh, because they, they need to do that to meet the demand and also just to manage their business in a, in a, in a reasonable way. Tom, what are you saying uh, in terms of your veterinary customers and, and how they want to have their animals treated? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to echo many of the things that, that Larry spoke of, but uh, just to divert back, Lisa, your information about Craig, I know Craig and Terry personally, both of them. So I will follow up with you offline on that. It's a tremendous cause. I'd like to certainly find out more about yours. Um, staffing has been an issue, uh, especially with my own networking and being at Mars for a period of time and running my own company, uh, you know, the veterinary shortages, the veterinary staff shortages are um, a ubiquitous problem that we've been dealing with and only getting worse as the number of adoptions that are occurring. Uh, it becomes more profound on an annual basis. Um, the, the the other issue is, and we, if we think about it, one of the things I'm thinking about, not to mention uh, volition veterinary in this regard, but also too, if you think about it, the amount of supportive care that's involved with animals that are sick with cancer is substantial, especially if they're ill. So if in fact one can go ahead and address and treat them earlier, the amount of supportive care they're going to need should be significantly reduced. We should also help with some of the efficiencies that are going on in some of these practices, both on the emergency side, the oncology side, as well as the general practitioner side. But uh, Larry's spot on. It's it's you know there's a number of things that are going on in veterinary think tanks right now about potentially looking into uh, nurse practitioners uh, stepping up in terms of what the nurses are currently doing, what the techs are doing, and uh, providing that plus telemedicine. You know that's another big wave of events that's going on right now. There's a lot of work being done just as we're doing on the human side right now because of shortages in terms of doctor care is to do a lot of telemedicine work with a number of these clients so that hopefully you can address some of the issues at home or at least prepare them so that it's maybe doesn't become an emergency but it becomes more of an urgent care situation and while i'm mentioning urgent care you're also seeing a number of these veterinary groups 
and beginning to establish urgent care situations. The reason they're establishing these urgent care facilities is they're trying to reduce that workload, which is going to the emergency and the criticalists, uh, which is, again, becoming overwhelming to them. So uh, it's, a, it's a major issue we have. Uh, servicing, we're dealing with a lot of compassion fatigue on the part of staff as well as doctors. Uh, and, and consequently, it's uh, when you, we think about the staggering numbers of growth, Joe, that you mentioned earlier on, uh, and, and the ability of us to um, be competitive with that growth, the AVMA and a number of us are thinking about other areas, such as some of the ones Larry mentioned and I mentioned, to try to address this issue so that we can provide better care more efficient care and also distribute the caretakers to uh, to a wider audience. So it's a it's an ongoing problem. Uh, Larry, your company is very much involved in devices, technology. Uh, given all of the challenges that have just been spoken about in the veterinary practice, what do you bring to the table to help these these professionals run their business more effectively, more efficiently, and in tune with their with their customers? Yeah, and I think you can add to that uh, more profitably because the the context that that we're looking at the veterinarian practice today and has changed quite a bit over the last decade. When you think about it, it wasn't that long ago that when you were going for your heartworm medication or your flea and tick medication, in fact, any medication, any prescriptions for your dogs or any fancy food or things like that, you bought them typically from your veterinarian. They pro they provided income to the veterinarian, not just revenue, but net income. And so now they've been, of course, having to look for other ways to fill that income gap over the last four or five years. And, and one of the areas, in fact, the fastest growing area in, uh, in vet services is, is a di point of care diagnostics. But it's that context and now layer onto that this significant staff shortage. So now they have to go out and try and find additional people. And and even at the tech level, they're competing with McDonald's down the street that's paying $18 an hour, and they're not used to paying that. And so now they're competing for staff. They have to pay more in, an, in a context of one where they've been financially uh, affected by the shift from buying things from the veterinarian to getting them delivered monthly by Chewy or Amazon or any of the rest of them. And so when we look at it, we focus on, of course, improving the quality of care for the pet. If it doesn't meet that criteria, we're not we're not involved in it. But beyond that, it's workflow, cash flow, and profitability. And so, um, all of our products uh, meet those criteria. So, for example, our True Forma diagnostic platform, it's point of care. Um, of course, it improves the quality of care by being able to give them a result uh, right away, as opposed to having to send it out and wait. So, faster diagnosis, faster onset of treatment. But in addition to help their uh, workflow, all you have to do is put the blood or serum in the cartridge and then you walk away. There's no pre, there's no pre preparation of the assays, no mixing, no, no standing there while the test runs. And then to help workflow, we provide that instrument as we do with our, uh, or will do with our TrueView microscope as well. We provide that with no capital required up front so that cash flow is positive right from the beginning. And then they're able to retain that margin that otherwise would be, would be given to a, uh, reference lab. So that's a true form of diagnostic platform. We also are introducing shortly the TrueView digital microscopy platform that, again, will provide that at no capital required upfront to the to the customer. So work for cash flow will be positive from the beginning. The unique features of the TrueView system are first that it incorporates something that's called a liquid lens that provides really the best quality image that you're going to be able to see on any microscope in the vet, in the animal health space. Uh, you can get a liquid lens technology or image stack uh, in a microscope in the human health side, but those microscopes cost over $100,000. We're the first and only microscope that will feature that to provide good quality images. And then we couple that with the fact that the TrueView microscope automatically prepares the slide for the user. So the user simply puts the blood on the slide, puts the slide in the machine and walks away. Hands on time one minute versus five, six, seven, maybe 10 minutes to prepare a slide or a set of slides to be used uh, alternatively. So not only does it positively impact workflow, you're giving back, you know, five minutes per slide times the number of slides that that practice is going to run in a month. Uh, but again, cash flow is positive right from the get-go. And because the automatic slide preparation ensures that the slide is 
is correctly prepared, uh, the number of incorrectly prepared slides that result in a non-diagnostic image are gone. So again, improved care, improved workflow, improved cash flow and profitability. On the therapeutic side, we have this the PulseVet shockwave system, which actually literally is a sound wave that's projected into the body by a, uh, by the created by a generator and then funneled through a handpiece that goes. It directs the sound wave energy into the tissue of an animal. Uh, in the small animal market, uh, there is twenty uh, uh, clinical indications, all backed by. Uh, clinical data, peer-reviewed clinical data, including randomized control trials. And what that sound wave does is the tissue, whether it's a superficial wound that needs healing or a bone that needs bending or uh, an osteoarthritic joint or lameness in a, in a dog that's gotten cancer and is suffering, or maybe lameness in a dog that didn't get cancer and is living longer than it otherwise would have and is now is facing the, the onset of age, that shock wave or that sound wave uh, upregulates cytokine production uh, it increases bone morphogenic protein, increases increases neural growth and vascular flow. It basically restarts the body's own regenerative processes. Uh, proven very effective, and it takes one or two treatments as opposed to alternative modalities that might be uh, drug regimen for a year or 10 or 15 visits required to get the same result. Uh, there, we do sell the capital equipment, but we have a financing program that limits the veterinarian practice to only $600 cash out of pocket that first year. And by the end of that first year, they've generated enough revenue and income to be able to pay for the whole system. The final system that we have in author is the CC Loop product, which is uh, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, uh, well established in the human space. Uh, it's been around for years. In fact, the first use, recorded use of, of uh, this kind of therapy was by Dr. Uh, by Albert Einstein's uh, cardiologist uh, years ago. So we have uh, exclusive rights in the animal health market. It comes in the form of a loop or a, a lounge that the pet can lay on. And what it does is it uh, increases uh, endothelial nitric oxide, which reduces inflammation and pain. So in these cases, whether it's an animal that's uh, lame or just getting old and, and, and suffering as a result, or someone that has an acute condition, uh, this is a product that is, is sent home with the patient by the veterinarian to send the healing home and also to involve them in that clinical pathway. We'll have more products in the future, but the one thing that you can count on is that they're all going to hit those five pillars, improve the quality of care for the pet, the satisfaction of the pet parent, and the workflow, cash flow, and profitability of the practice. Fantastic. Uh, Lisa, what kind of opportunities here do you see in the next couple of years for your business? What, what areas are you focusing on? We are, well, we continue to focus on all plant-based products, as I said, prescription products, but they are all plant-based. And we are looking where there is overlap in the physiology, the anatomy, um, the organ system, the regulate, regulatory systems of animals and humans, since our primary business is the human, human business. And then uh, we have this emerging area in animal health. And the gut is remarkable. The gut is remarkably similar in humans, dogs, cats. It's, it's a bit different in, in horses. Of course, we know that, um, but we have seen some nice benefit in horses as well. So I think, first of all, it will be <coughs> expansion of a product that we have that normalizes gut function, that normalizes, prevents the dehydration from diarrhea to expand to all types of diarrhea, not limited to the conditional approval right now in chemotherapy-induced diarrhea in dogs. And again, that was a, it's a nice regulatory pathway by which we could get the product out very quickly. Um, expanding to other animals with this very same product for, again, a broad range of diarrheas. And then um, looking at additional products um, across the space as we bring them over from the human side. But again, for the most part, focused on the GI uh, area, we do have some that are focused on, I would say, wellness, energy, um, you know, products that are in the human area, more in H ADHD and depression. You don't exactly have those same indications in humans, but the wellness aspect of those could be relevant to animals as well. The other thing that we're seeing now with a product that is focused in the, in the cancer area is that a lot of these animals are not going 
to the specialist. So there's a lot of education that can be provided to the general veterinary practice um, participants so, so that they can be educated, they know what the opportunities are to treat this growing issue of cancer in, in small animals. And in particular, um, you know, they've known the pet, they've known the patient for a long time, how to keep that patient comfortable, how to improve their quality of life. And so to expand our educational and promotional aspects outside of the oncologist's office is important to us as well. Are there global opportunities for your respective businesses? Don, can you touch on that? Yeah, I can I can speak to that, um, Joe. Um, the global opportunity, first of all, to let you know, currently we are looking for worldwide distribution. Currently our test, our first new QVET cancer test and our subsequent tests, which just came out on monitoring. Um, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. We uh, have a a partnership with the IDEX reference laboratory. So in the United States alone, it's in all, our test is currently offered in over 45 states as part of the reference labs. I mean, many practices obviously use IDEX currently. We also have a relationship with the Texas GI lab in the US, and we also have a relationship with Heskins VBL lab. So it's it's well available in the United States. In Europe, we currently have, uh, through HESCA and through all relationships, we have three labs, one in Italy, one in Portugal, and then soon to have many in the UK, some in the UK. Uh, and IDEX is launching probably in the second half of 2023, and they'll be in Australia, uh, EU, UK, and probably in Japan as well. So that's all part of our worldwide distribution in terms of our, our test availability. So we want to make that available. Hopefully we're gonna cover a significant part of the globe by the time we get into 2024. In terms of products that are available, the first test, as I mentioned, is the one that's been specifically positioned for wellness, which is the new QVET cancer test. And then the other one that I just mentioned to you with the paper that we just came out with written by Dr. Robles, um, which is actually being published tomorrow, uh, is for monitoring, for monitoring disease progression. And what I mean by that is it's a tool that our, both GPs as well as oncologists are going to be able to utilize when that animal comes in and is sick our test matched up against typical uh, per parameters that are currently used, CRP and TK, which is, I know, veterinary language, but veterinarians know what we're talking about. Uh, our test really is able to monitor the progression of that disease and see, in fact, how it's responding to these chemotherapeutic agents and also is being able to identify when that animal goes into remission. So you can see how, how an affordable test, simple blood, a little bit of plasma, can be utilized. I mean, the, the, the cost of the client typically could be under $75, highly, highly um, reasonable, rather than potentially a doctor having to use a lot of extensive diagnostics in terms of chemistries and, and analyzers. So very excited about that. And then we also are working on CATS for this year, where we're utilizing our new Q platform to establish the pre-analytics in, in CATS. We hope to have a claim for using this in CAT and cancer, in particular feline lymphoma, by 2024. And of course, the market in the United States alone is 100 million cats. Uh, hopefully, this will bring more cats in to see the veterinarians, and hopefully, we'll be able to uh, start to pick this up uh, much earlier. So the, the opportunities for us are immense with the partnerships that we have, and we're currently in discussions with many more partners as well. So we anticipate announcing a number of other partnerships over the course of the next 6 to 12 months. Fantastic, Tom. Uh, Larry, global opportunities for Zometica? Yep, they're there. Uh, before I get to that, uh, Lisa, we should talk. When I heard that your product is uh, applicable not just to chemotherapy-induced diarrhea uh, and GI issues, we'll be launching assays for our uh, point-of-care diagnostic a little bit later this year for non-infectious GI. And uh, so we'll be able to identify some of those issues, and maybe there's some synergies there between our companies. So let's talk. But having Perfect. said that, um, we are global now, um, certainly not all around the globe. Uh, you know, we're a small company, but we about 20 percent of our PulseVet installations uh, are ex-US, uh, predominantly in Europe. We have a wholly owned subsidiary in Japan, as well as one in uh, Switzerland. Uh, we're just now entering uh you know, in a kind of a more significant way, the South American market, the PulseVet shockwave system, primarily for equine use, has really become standard of care for performance horses and uh, horse rehab. And so there's lots of countries around that uh, that do horse racing and things. Similarly, our CC product is uh, is sold through a network of international distributors. Um, as we acquired both of these companies within the last 19 months, we're now in the process of putting those distribution 
uh, groups together. And we expect to roll out our uh, true form, a true view, uh, and uh, vet guardian monitoring systems uh, worldwide, you know, or at least to international markets. I don't want to get too uh, grandiose here, but eventually someday be, uh, you know, be, uh, be global. Uh, so, yeah, we see market uh, all around the world. And um, I think it's, it's rare that uh, you find uh, countries that, uh, that have significant companion animals, that have significant uh, access to veterinary services uh, that, that wouldn't need uh, the same technology as we have in the United States. So we're truly global in outlook. Lisa, yourself? Yeah, well, of course, there's animals around the world in need around the world. We uh, have some efforts that are going forward, interestingly, with the growing interest in companion animals and during the pandemic in China. So that's the first place where we've dipped our toe. The insurance level in Europe and the UK is very interesting for an opportunity to, to have a prescription product. We'll need to do it through partnerships. So that's where it's more of a business development effort to count on the local expertise to understand the regulatory environment and how to get the reach to the, the pet parent. Is it a consumer? direct to consumer market or is it going through the veterinarian country by country and i'll just give a shout out to larry my my horse used your shockwave therapy and it worked and he's a performance horse he's not a race horse and he did great on it i love it fantastic, fantastic. Glad to well thank you all uh, we're gonna have to leave it there i will make sure that each of you has the other person's contact data so that you can get together afterwards <laughs> But, uh, we really appreciate your time, your expertise, your insights. Thank you so much. I think that our uh, audience will great, has greatly appreciated it. Uh, for all of those uh, in our audience, if you would like to arrange a one-on-one -on -one meeting with these companies, please go to our website at lithumpartners.com slash virtual and click on the request one-on-one -on -one meeting button. Thank you so much, panelists and everyone else. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Take care now. Bye -bye. Nice meeting you all.